orthopedics the department deals with the bones and all so it is having the x-ray machine and the plaster cutter then comes the ent department which also uses the laryngoscope and the ent endoscope and ophthalmology which uh, related with the eye and uh, defects of eye we are monitoring the tonometer which uh, measures uh, intraocular pressure and the oct machine which uh, is an imaging modality to view the retina the computerized tonometer is also there refraction chair unit of thalmo of thalmometer and of thalmic ultrasound scanners are also present so next department is a urology department next slides <clears throat> so urology is a department which it's a branch which uh, deals with the kidney related um, kidney and nephrology related diseases and the major equipments used here is a urodynamics lithotripsy or the eswl dialysis machine uroflowmetry and uh, peritoneal dialysis so there are two types of dialysis that are available peritoneal dialysis and uh, hemodialysis hemodialysis is where we take the blood outside the body peritoneal dialysis a dialysis process that can be done inside the body so uroflowmetry is also there which uh, is used to measure the urine flow and the uh, flow force of urinary stream so urodynamic uh, studies are also taken uh, this is to measure uh, the capacity of the bladder the eswl is a therapeutic equipment to use short waves high energy short wave uh, shock waves or late so now let's see what are the major uh, equipments that are available in the radiology department <clears throat> so radiology department is a place where we use uh, equipments for the diagnostic purpose mainly so here we can see all the equipments with uh, which are which which use radi which uses uh, ionizing radiations or non ionizing radiation for the image purpose imaging purpose so the major equipments that are available in uh, radiology includes for the diagnostic purpose are ct so the model name is brilliance and the mri which is a philips from magnesia 3.t tesla and pet ct with philips gemini tf and spect the mammogram dexa scan you can see digital x ray the cath lab the dental x ray mobile x ray the ultrasound and for the therapeutic purpose we can see the linac let's see each uh, let's see all the images first of all the philips brilliance ict 256 slides previous slides so the ct machine with 256 slides and the three tesla mri next one and the philips gemini tf is a pet ct we can see the model of a ge spect with uh, two ga gamma cameras so next is the mammogram the mammography 
So it's by the Siemens Mammomat Inspiration. And the other one is DEXA scan. And the digital radiography X-ray. Samsung G C80. The Philips Allura Clarity FT10, which is a cath lab. So next we can see the diagnostic purpose again, that's dental x-ray. So mobile x-ray and the ultrasound. Next slide, sir. Next slide, sir. So the major equipment, the rest all was the diagnostic and this one is for the therapeutic purpose. Mainly we use for the cancer treatment. It's a LINAC or the linear accelerometer from Varian. It's a company name. So next slide, sir. Next slide. So let's see what's a computer tomography. It's not in gen previous slide. Okay. So computer tomography uses a rotating X-ray source. And the images are taken and uh, it is processed along with, uh, with the help of a computer to create a cross-sectional images of the body, especially the bones, the blood vessels, and the soft tissues inside inside a body. So we'll be having a rotating X-ray source. The images taken are processed with the help of a computer. So the next slide. CT or the computer tomography is mainly used for a trauma cases and the, for the visualizing the heart tissues. So mainly the axial slices of the body is taken in CT. Imaging source will be an X-ray radiation. So as I told, the rotating X-ray will be there. You can see that in the previous slide. And the machine ranges from the single slice to 650, 640 slices. And if the slices are more, the scan will be more faster and the less artif artifacts will be there in the images. So, so higher and higher slice CT will be always used for the, uh, for the imaging purpose and hospitals. Next one, next slide, sir. Let's discuss what are the common issues that can be seen uh, during a CT scan. So in a CT room, we have to maintain an ambient room temperature and uh, humidity Rains. And so the temperature has to be maintained as 18 to 20 degrees Celsius and with approximate uh, humid, um, humidity also has to be maintained. And if the power, if, the, if there is a variation in the voltage source, if there is a variation in the power, the fuse may even blow off. And if the tube is continuously or the CT is continuously used, the tube may get uh, heated up fast. And the next is the software crashes on the console or episode with the software. Some, sometimes the software will not be working properly. So we have to reinstall the software and we have to perform the scan. Some the major issues that are happening with the CTS, it's, it's with the software issue. So next slide. So next is also an imaging modality is the MRI scan, which we have seen the three Tesla MRI, which is a highly powerful MRI with the magnet. It has a three Tesla magnet inside it. 
So magnetic resonance imaging is a type of scan that uses a strong magnetic field. We all know about the magnetic, what is the importance of a magnetic um, MRI scan as compared to the CT scan. It doesn't use any kind of uh, ionizing radiation as like the CT. So it is safe for the patient. So I hope you all know the principle behind the MRI scan. We know that the, our body consists of uh, H plus like uh, body consists of water and which contains H plus ions, water uh, which contains H plus ion. So it has a proton and May I audible? Yes, yes, Prasita. Am I audible, sir? I know, very clear. Is it audible, sir? Yeah, no. Yeah. Can I start with the MRI again? Sir? So MRI is also a imaging modality, as I told you before. So it uses, uh, with the help of a magnet, magnetic property, we are uh, doing the scan. It uses a three Tesla. No, previous slide, sir. Previous slide. Previous slides. Yes. Okay. So we know that our body consists of major part of our body consists of water, which consists of uh, H plus ions. Inside that we have the proton, which has a magnetic property. So with the help of this uh, magnetic property of the proton, when it is kept in the field, a magnetic field. Uh, the protons will be having the direction similar to that of uh, magnetic field. So when the radio frequency is applied, it displaces the alignment and come back to the normal once the radio frequency is removed. The difference in the captured, difference is captured and reconstructed to form an image. I hope you will be knowing more about the medical physics MRA and not going deep into that. So the major components of uh, MRA is can include the gantry or the magnet, magnetic field, frequency, it's transferred in the image. Reconstruction and console is also there to reconstruct the image. A gradient coil to focus our radio frequency back to the patient. So the full delicate helium is there to maintain the structure. So we know that a superconductivity property is maintained with the help of a liquid helium. A liquid helium, why it is used means it is having, it can go up to very low temperature for about four Kelvin or uh, to negative 270 degrees Celsius. So parallelly the resistance will be 
very low resistance is equivalent to zero. So superconductivity property itself is like that. The resistance will be zero. To bring down the resistance, we are using this kind of liquid helium. So next one is uh, MRI. What are the common issues that we can find with the MRI? So next slide, sir. Yes, come on. So the common issues includes, again, with the software. For CT, for both CT and MRI, the major issue is coming with the, the software part. So the artifacts and the images can be, uh, artifacts and the image can be due to an external uh, noises. So that we are uh, shielded, we, we have, it's due to the external The patient heating because of the clothing, tattoos, and makeups implants that they are using. If they, if it is metals, will be getting attracted because of the magnetic field. I hope you are not clear about the artifacts and the image due to the external noises from the gantry room. So. So MRI rooms are, will be shielded with the copper so that the magnetic property is not lost. So the magnetic property is within that room itself. To shield that uh, electromagnetic property, we are uh, using this copper shield, which is also called as Faraday's cage. So most of the artifacts can be avoided with the help of this Faraday's cage. Then comes the cooling circuit issues. So when the cooling circuit is, or the chiller is break down, MRI won't function properly. So if the magnet is always on, if somebody accidentally enters a room who is wearing any kind of metals, that can be attracted towards some uh, MRI. So small metallic, parts like coins, stapler pins, hair clips, if that is with the patient or uh, with the technician can affect the quality of the images or it can even get attracted to the MRI. So MRI scan is mainly used for uh, tissues. Is it audible, sir? Yeah, now it's come back. Please keep the mic closer. Okay. So, no, can you... Can is the, yeah, okay. So, MRI, as I told before, it is used mainly for the soft tissues. And it is safe than uh, CT scan because it doesn't, have, doesn't use any kind of ionizing radiations. So, let's... Let's go move on to the next slide. This DEXA scan. Please, uh, next slide, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. 
So the next type of imaging modality mainly for the bone mineral density to calculate the bone mineral density of a patient. We are using the DEXA scan. It also uses X-ray. It measures the bone mineral density and the bone loss. So previous slides. Sir. It's used for diagnostics of osteoporosis and if there is any bone fracture, we recommend uh, DEXA scan. It uses two types of X-ray beams with different peak energy. The one peak is absorbed by the soft tissue and the other peak is absorbed by the bones. And uh, how we are getting is that when the soft tissue absorption amount is subtracted from the total absorption, so the remaining will be the bone mineral density. So the test is non-invasive, it is fast and accurate with the help of X-ray. And it also involves an extremely low level of radiation. Next is the mammogram. Next slide, sir. So mammogram is an X-ray technique, again used uh, to scan the breast if there is any chance of the patient is used to check whether there is any lumps or if there is any signs of uh, cancer, especially in women. Amogram uses the X-ray, we can see that in the picture. It's so X-ray image of uh, the breast. Can you go to the next slide, sir? So the next is digital X-ray or the digital radiography system, which replaces the all cassette system. So the image processing is done with the help of uh, You can see the flow diagram of a digital radiography system. How the image processing is done. It is not as like the ordinary X-rays that we can that is available in the hospitals. It replaces the film radiography images with the digital flat panel detectors will be there kept. Uh, so several post processing can be done with uh, the image that can that is obtained. So it, this is to improve the quality of the image. So pro, post processing can improve the quality. So this can be used uh, both in fixed, it's fixed, or then can be used in a mobile X-rays. So next comes is a nuclear imaging or the PET CT. Next slide. Sir. So PET CT is again an imaging modality. Here we are using a radioactive isotopes which is injected into the patient. And uh, we will analyze, the doctor will analyze the metabolic activity of the body with the help of the scan. So this is to ensure whether there is any tumor cells that, are, that is there in the body. So how we, are, is it clear? Yes, yes.
So for a cancerous cell or a tumor cell, the metabolic activity will be more. So than the normal cell. So the So the abnormal tissues will radiate differently or uh, radiate more brightly in the PET scan. So the PET scan incorporated with the CT scan as a reference and the PET CT scan is obtained. You can see the difference from the images that is given in the slide. So two different examinations can be done. One CT scan can be done. Also the PET scan is incorporated for more clear image of the body and more clear metabolic activities can be visualized with the help of a PET scan incorporated with a CT scan. Next, next slide, sir. Next is a SPECT single positron emission, emission computer tomography. It's an again imaging modality that shows the blood flow to the tissues and organs. It's mainly used for the diagnostics of the brain to analyze whether there is any stroke, stress, stress factors. Infection and tumors are there in the spine. SPECT is a nuclear imaging scan, which is again incorporated either with the CT or with the MRI. SPECT is incorporated with either with CT or with the MRI for the better image. Radioisotopes is inserted. The radioisotopes uh, mainly include the iodine-123, xenon, fluorine-18, which is mentioned here. So it uses a ga ga gamma camera system, which detects iso. which helps to detect the radioisotopes. Can you go back to the next slide, sir? You can summarize some slides due to the poor internet and go to the maintenance and troubleshooting section. Is it audible now, sir? Yeah, now it's coming. So let's summarize that the radiological equipments is due to lack of time. Let's see what is LINAG. LINAG is a linear accelerator which is mainly used for the therapeutic purpose. It also uses an X-ray with a high, high energy X-rays are used. This is targeted to the tumor cells to destroy the tumor cells. You can see from the uh, block diagrams. So that will that uh, that are the major equipment that is used in uh, radiology departments. So now let's see what is an operation theater. What uh, next slide, sir? Mm -hmm. 
So next slide. Yes. So operation theater is a place where the major surgery so major surgeries are done. So we know that there are types of operation theaters that is available recently. So, re so recent trend in operation theater includes a modular OT. So let's see what's the difference between a modular OT and a conventional OT that is available in most of the hospitals. So the modular OT is an upcoming innovation and uh, most of the multi-specialty hospitals are having uh, this kind of modular OT. The major difference is that the modular OT is consists of modules and slanted it consists of wall ceilings in the slanted panels with high pressure lamination, then antibiotic microbial surface. It maintains, in modular OT, maintains a positive airflow. A positive pressure is maintained inside the operation theater. We can integrate or incorporate new changes easily into a modular OT. So the construction speed, speed wise, we, we check the modular OT can be constructed more fast than the ordinary conventional OT. So modular OTs are more flexible and uh, more uh, equipment can be incorporated. So it uses a pendant mainly. We can see that in, uh, in this figure, it uses pendants where we can keep uh, where we can incorporate all the electrical, medical gas systems and the lightings, all can be incorporated in a single pendant. So it reduces infection from like a hospital acquired infections will be there. So it reduces the chance of hospital acquired diseases. So infections can be controlled in modular OT because of this uh, high uh, positive pressure that is maintained inside. But in case of normal OT, it is made up of mainly made up of the concrete walls, which cannot be further uh, elaborated into, or we cannot incorporate any additional things to that uh, uh, operation theater. Once it is constructed, it will be remaining as like that, nothing can be changed. But in case of modular OT, we can change the operation theater. If you want to change to another location, we can even shift everything. And so that is the reason the advancement in the operation theater. So uh, this kind of modular OTs will be easy to clean and the moisture resistance, the continuous flow, a bacteria, a continuous bacteria free flow is maintained, or we can say a positive pressure is maintained inside the modular OT. And uh, you can see that in the next slide. Can you please go to the next slide, sir? Next slide. Yeah. See, this is the modular roti. You can see the pendant. Even anesthesia, you can see the OT table pendants that are available. 
it's a structure of a modular wheel. The CC machine can be kept in with the help of this pendant. So static flooring, equipment storage unit, pressure stabilizer, X-rays, and uh, hermetically sealed doors will be available to maintain that uh, positive pressure. Pendants are available, light sources, and the wall and ceiling will be all, everything will be, wall, ceiling, and all will be modular um, or the panels. So laminar flow is maintained inside this operation theater. It's a new advancement in operation theater. So we can see what are the equipments that are available in an operation theater. Next, uh, next slide, sir. So it's a new advancement in uh, surgery. It's a robotic surgery system. It's not the it's not that a robot is doing the surgery. It's equipment which is controlled by a physician or a surgeon. So this type of uh, surgical equipment is developed for minimal invasive. And uh, this is a da Vinci surgery from in duty surgical, we can see from that uh, picture, engineers installing the machine. So the below picture, we can see the four arms are there for this robotic system. So the, can you go to the next slide, sir? So the surgeon is operating the robotic surgery, uh, robotic surgery, surgery system, with their fingers. So the surgeon's hand movement at the console, in real time, bending and rotating the instrument while performing the procedure. So it is having a high definition 3D camera as one arm. The other three arms will be performing the surgery. One arm will be dedicated for the camera. So this is a new advancement and the latest advancement in the surgery, surgical process. So other major equipments that are available in the next slide, sir. In our team machine, uh, in, in operation theater include IBP machine, insufflator, neuro, nerve simulator, endoscopic vein harvesting. Next slide, sir. It's a portable suction unit, the heart-lung machine. It's an important machine that is, uh, that is used for the transplant. It is also called an artificial circulatory system. It uh, performs a function of uh, heart and the lung. And the tourniquet, ACT machine, anesthesia machine, and the defibrillator. So other equipments includes mainly the OT table, electrosurgical unit for performing the surgery. Next slide, sir. So the later the CUSA or the Cavitronic ultrasonic surgical aspirator, where we are using the ultrasonic uh, low frequency for performing the surgery of uh, For soft tissues, uh, especially for the liver tissues of the transplant or the neurological cases, we'll be using this. So the tissues with the uh, so QSA is used with the cavitronic ultrasound surgery is mainly used for tissues 
with more water content and the less fiber content, especially the liver tissues. Or to dissect the tumors, we can use the surgical procedure. And next is the CM, which uh, so which is used in operation theater, which uses again the uh, X-ray. And the, then as a new neurosurgical microscope, the high precision microscope. So next is next slide. This is all about the, the major equipment available. There are several a number of equipments available for repair surgery procedures, but I have uh, shown you all the important uh, equipments that are available. So the next is the major equipment that is available in the emergency department. So for the emergency or the casualty department, the major thing is a portable ventilator, patient monitors, portable x-ray, portable suction apparatus, the defibrillator, ECG machine, and again, portable uh, ultrasound has to be used in the emergency departments. Let's see next um, next slide, sir. So the major equipment that is available in IC. So before going to that, I have I wanted to tell you a new advancement that is incorporated in ICU. That is a central monitoring system. It's a smart monitoring system. is a kind of monitoring system that is my voice breaking no okay is it okay no okay Okay, so the central monitoring system, we know that uh, what is a uh, function of a multi monitor. It, uh, it is used as a diagnostic equipment to measure the vital signs. So each patient vital signs, so what is that uh, advantages of this central monitoring system? Is that we can monitor each patient's vital sign in a single monitor. So I also data from all through server or packs. So the central monitors will be kept in a patient the professionals like doctors or nursing staffs and continuously monitor the vital signs of the patient without entering into their room. This uh, information server can also transfer the data to directly to the patient, directly to sorry, directly to the doctor, and to other medical staffs in case of any emergency. So this is the latest advancement that we see in use. This is the Hope you are clear with it. and we can go to the next slide. The so major equipment that are used in uh, ICUs includes a uh, ventilator, the so gas uh, ABG or the blood gas analyzer, the multi monitor, suction apparatus, patient warmers, incubators in NICU, neonatal ICUs, and nebulizer, phototherapy unit again in. Uh, in ICUs and mobile x rays, ultrasound, so the major ICU equipment that are available. So, so, can you move on to next slide? So yes, so I have given an overview of what are the equipments that are available in hospitals generally. 
So we have to provide an adequate maintenance because the hospital, we know that the hospital equipments itself are very costly and it is highly dedicated for the patient care and the quality treatment has to be provided. So in order to maintain that, we are having two types of maintenance. It includes the corrective maintenance of the troubleshooting and the preventive maintenance. Corrective maintenance is nothing but when we are, when we, when there is a, a defect is observed in the equipment, if there is any fault that has happened to a equipment, the engineer or the company can come and restore the crumbling. So preventive maintenance is a routine or the periodical inspection of a medical device. We can say more like a digital Yeah. Yes, yes. This is a routine or periodical inspection of a medical device. Either done in a month or in six months' time. Every reason is to reduce the downtime of a medical device and to ensure the patient's safety. So now let's move on to the corrective maintenance of medical devices. Next slide, sir. So troubleshooting of the corrective maintenance is executed when there is any fault occurred in the asset or the medium of an or an equipment. So this troubleshooting restores the equipment depending upon the fault. So there are various steps that has to be performed during the troubleshooting of medical devices. First thing is that we have to understand the work principle of equipment clearly. For example, if you are taking an ECG machine, we have to know that what is an uh, principle of that equipment or the ECG machine. So what are the accessories that is included within the machine? There are leads, uh, the leads that will be three leads, some will be three lead system, some will be five leads or the 12 lead system will be available. So there is a printer to print the ECG out. So some, of, uh, some ECG machines are using the battery, are battery operated. So we have to understand the basics of that equipment which we are going to troubleshoot. And then comes at the, how to assess the environment. Like if there is any visual auditory or uh, if there is any alarm or if there is any cracks or if the power cord is not. So. So the next is the assess the equipment environment. Like uh, visually, we can see whether there is any damage that happened to the equipment of, or if the power cord is properly connected. And uh, we can see whether there is any sound that is coming inside, uh, of, inside the equipment or if there is any alarms that is uh, alarms like visual alarms or the auditory alarms. And next is the operator's error. We look for we have to look for the operator's error. We have to see where um, we have to check with the operator uh, like what had happened, how this fault had occurred. We have to know the case, how this error had occurred, and then we have to isolate the unit or the medical devices. We have taken an example of an ECG machine. If there is any fault happen, we have we can take the equipment to biomedical department or to a separate room. I have to check the equipment operations once more, whether it is correctly operated and check the patient cables, whether the cables are proper, whether the electrical con con uh, continuity is available with each leaks. 
then comes the troubleshooting aids we can use several troubleshooting aids like multimeters and other uh, that is other kinds of aids that are available within the biomedical department to correct that or we can check with some equipments will be showing the error messages with the help of this kind of error messages we can correct uh, some faults and uh, some equipments will be showing some uh, self testing procedures or uh, calibration internal calibration will be there within that equipment so we can perform uh, this kind of operational checks and we can analyze what has gone wrong within that equipment so, so can you move on to next slide sir so after performing all these things if still the equipment is not working means we can open the equipment case and we can uh, see whether each modules are functioning well and we can check uh, check the cable in the connections whether everything is connected properly whether the cables are connected properly and uh, we can even analyze the board level problems like uh, if there is if there are any if there is any electronic components that has to be replaced we can do that with the help of this troubleshooting uh, aids or we can check with the the manuals the troubleshooting manuals will be provided with along with the equipment so we can uh, check with the help of that or if nothing is working like uh, if biomedical engineer cannot resolve the problem ultimately we can call and contact the company representative or the service team for the further assistance so the equipment will be either under the amc contract or the cmc contract and that is the annual maintenance contract of the equipment or the comprehensive maintenance contract uh, this includes a service so the company is supposed to provide the service when the equipment is going faulty or even in cmc contract they can even replace the faulty parts that comes that is an agreement between the medical device company and the user so we can uh, move on uh, we can contact the company person for the further assistance if the biomedical engineer is not able to resolve the equipment problems so next is uh, preventive maintenance next slide sir so as i told you before the preventive maintenance is a routine or a periodical inspection it's mainly a visual inspection uh, to notice a small problems whether we can fix that before a major problem develops so this is a routine check it can be done it's for some equipments it is done once in a month or for some equipments once in 6 months it is done so preventive maintenance is like the i have given a chart like what all the things that has to be checked so visually check the exterior of the equipments whether there are any signs of damage if the power cord is getting damaged visually check the condition of the power cord the electrical continuity of the power cord there is any cracks or breaks that is happening in the wire and next is visually inspect the general conditions and controls of switches uh, indicators and the alarms we have to visually inspect that turn the equipment off and open the user accessible covers we can open up and see whether all the connections are proper inside it so we can even inspect if there is any corrosion or any damage or occur externally so if there is any damage that caused due to the overheating we can check that you can check the performance of the battery if it is not up to the voltage that is uh, provided in the equipment we can replace the uh, uh, battery and uh, performance perform the manufacturer recommended operational function for some equipment some operational checks will be there for the as uh, preventive maintenance so we can perform those steps 
uh, for example, in defibrillator, there is a mode called operational check. It's, it is a self-calibrating or uh, just done during the preventive maintenance. So the equipment will show whether there is uh, the battery rate, the battery rating, if the printer is having sufficient paper, uh, and all the internal condition can be seen with the help of uh, an operational check. And then comes the, uh, we can verify the operations like uh, buttons, display, and indicators. And uh, another thing is that we can clean the exterior of the unit, including the accessories, cables. We can clean it and use properly. It can inspect all the filters. Uh, for example, in patient warmers and for the ultrasound equipment, the, there are filters which will be easily getting affected with the dust. So once it is fully covered, the filters are fully covered uh, with the dust. If you are not removing that, the ultrasound machine won't be uh, turning on. It will not function. And for the same as a case of patient murmur, it will not uh, perform. If you are not uh, cleaning its filter, so air, so in order to ensure that air circulation, we are using this kind of filters. So we can check uh, in such equipments, if, we are, if there is any air filters, we have to clean that by using an electrical safety analyzer. So we can use an electrical safety analyzer to perform the leakage test, enclosure test, and applied parts test. We can ensure the uh, safety of the equipment. So complete paperwork has to be done for the future reference, like a uh, the previous preventive maintenance has to be recorded and we have to apply that uh, preventive maintenance tag to each and every equipment. That is all about that uh, preventive maintenance. Can you, so next slide, sir. So next is the medical equipment calibration. Can I take a minute? Have yeah. some water. So now let's see. Yeah. My audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, sure. Continue. Okay, so let's continue with the medical equipment calibration. So a medical medical device is defined as a medical as an electrical equipment which is designed for a diagnostic or a therapeutic purpose which is powered with the main supply. Even physically or electrically in contact with the patient the energy or the uh, sciences, the vital sciences taken from the Medical devices are generally classified to diagnostic equipments and therapy equipments. Diagnostic equipments in general here there are types of equipments that are diagnostic equipment, therapeutic, radiological equipment, uh, laboratory equipments. But in general, we are we are uh, classifying the medical devices in the team as the diagnostic equipment and therapeutic equipment. Diagnostic equipment is to check or uh, to acquire the vital signs from the patient. So the input is from the patient. Uh, input to the machine is from the patient. Whereas in case of therapeutic equipment, the output of the medical devices is delivered to the patient for the treatment purpose. 
So this is the main difference between a therapeutic and a diagnostic equipment. So the uh, diagnostic equipment, the input is taken from the patient, and for the therapeutic equipment, the device output is given to the patient for the treatment. As I have shown here, the input to this devices will go from the patient in case of diagnostic equipment. So let's see what is the classification of medical, like what is the importance of calibration? What is a calibration? We have, uh, I think yesterday you had a class on, uh, you have a section on the medical equipment calibration. There we have seen that a calibration is a process of comparing the medical devices with a master calibrator. We'll check the accuracy range. So this Calibration is done to minimize the uncertainty in measurements. We know that we are using the medical devices for a longer period of time, in India especially. So mainly if once an equipment is purchased, it can be, it is used for about more than 10 years. So its accuracy is questionable. So we have to do the calibration, whether the equipment is functioning well. In order to check that, we have to do the calibration. I have to measure the accuracy and precision of the device if it is used for a longer period of time. So this calibration is also a part of preventive maintenance and the corrective maintenance. So when the equipment, this is also a kind of routine check. Uh, this calibration is done mainly in, uh, in an year. So can you go to the next slide, sir? So mainly the uh, equipments, medical devices are classified into class one, class two, class three, or the implant implants and the active implantable devices. So this is this classification is based on the electrical safety. The class one equipments will be having low risk because it is. Um, so I will explain what is a class one equipment later. So the class two equipments will be having medium to high and the class three equipments will be having high range risk and the active implantable devices are also of high risk category. So now, now let's see the symbols of uh, uh, the medical devices. So the major symbols, next slide, sir. So these are the major symbols that, are, that is available within a, a medical devices. This classifies the equipments into, as I told you, like a class one equipments, we can see if the equipment belongs to class one, we can see a symbol like this. And the class two, which is having a double insulation. Class one is nothing but the equipments which are having a protection against electric shock. By additional protection is also So class one equipments will be having a protective earth. Then the class two equipments will be having, um, will be having a two double layer of insulations will be there. So if one, is it clear? Yes, yes, proceed. So the class two equipments will be having two layers of protection, but the class one equipments will be having a protective earth. And uh, now we can see other classification based on the, the type, like a type of applied parts that the, the equipment is using. So this is classified to cl uh, type B, type BF, and type CF, and we are taking an equipment which is using any accessories, like for example, ECG equipment. If we are seeing, you can see this kind of symbols. Either this class one can be seen in the ECG machine. Also, um, a type CF applied part can, the symbol also can be seen in 
the situation. So what is the difference between B, BF, and the CF? B is body type. B is death record and suitable, and it is not suitable for direct cardiac application. And next is BF, which is also a higher degree protection than B type. But it is not suitable for the direct cardiac application. But in case of cardiac protein or C type, this is exclusively used for the cardiac application. And we can also see a defibrillated through B type and defibrillated through BF type and defibrillation to uh, CF type. This means that we know that when uh, we know that the ECG, for example, when you're taking the ECG for a cardiac patient, if suddenly the ECG leads will be connected to the patient. And if suddenly if the patient is having any atrial fibrillation or the ventricular fibrillation, or the ventricular fibrillation we have to suddenly apply the defibrillator. So defibrillator is delivering electric shock to the patient. So if this uh, like uh, ECG leads are not protected from the de defibrillator uh, shock, this, this uh, metals, the metals which are connected, this electrode space can carry the electric shock to the ECG machine and can damage the ECG machine. So in order to avoid such kind of accidents, this types of uh, um, accessories with uh, this kind of symbols are used. If uh, CF with the defibrillation means we can uh, use the ECG. We can use the term Is it all? Yes, yes, proceed. So, previous slide, sir. Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah. ECG. So, ECG leads in that area will be having this uh, CF with defib protected, that symbol will be there. So that means that we can apply the defibrillator even though the ECG leads are connected. So if it is non-defibrillator protected means the equipment can be damaged with the defibrillator chop. So when the next slide, sir. So these are the major symbols that are available in uh, medical devices. So next is when should we have to calibrate uh, the medical devices? When we purchase, uh, so most of this won't be, most of the hospital uh, hospitals will not purchase uh, a secondhand uh, equipment. If in case, uh, uh, if in case a secondhand equipment has to be purchased, then the calibration has to be done to ensure the values are correct and accurate. So if uh, the next is that when the equipment, the equipment has undergone any troubleshooting or any maintenance, then the calibration has to be done and then only the equipment is supposed to be used. So if the equipment has been used over a period of time, for example, if it is, uh, if the calibration due is over, you have to again calibrate the equipment. When the observation appears questionable, for example, the doctors itself will be having some doubts and the uh, accuracy of medical devices. At this time, we can use the calibration equipments like uh, simulators or the analyzers. And we can show to the, um, doctors said that the medical devices are working well with the kind of accuracy or you can even check 
used to check whether the accuracy is correct or not. We can give a proof with the help of this calibration equipment. So why next slide, sir? So what are the importance of a calibration? So calibration reduces the risk to the patient as well as the environment. So if the equipment is functioning well, the patient uh, risk is less and uh, the patient will be getting a safe and a quality treatment. So improve the quality of the treatment, the proper diagnostics and uh, therapy can be given to the patient. So it it uh, calibration reduces the downtime of the medical devices. For example, so to reduce the downtime of the medical devices, so that is the ultimate goal of a management. We have to ensure that if if we are calibrating and we can see that if the accuracy is not met or if the precision is not met, we can see there is some um, fault that happened within the equipment or the accessories has to be replaced. There are several things that can be identified from the calibration report. So it improves the life cycle of the equipment. If you're maintaining it well, if you're calibrating and using it um, well, we can even... Um, improve the life cycle of the equipment. So if there, you can avoid the medical legal cases, as I told you before, if uh, someone criticizes regarding the medical equipments are not functioning well, we can show that it's a kind of proof that we are showing to the doctors or to the patient that our medical devices are functioning well. To make sure that the working condition and the emergency situations, for example, Nowadays, ventilators are used uh, for the mainly COVID patients. And the ventilators are widely used in hospitals. So we have to ensure that the working condition is accurate. The uh, ventilators are delivering uh, the fixed values or not. We have to ensure the correct working uh, condition. Uh, we can use this kind of calibration equipment, especially the analyzers. Or, or for example, the defibrillator. Uh, so we don't know what is the delivered uh, energy. So we will be fixing one energy, which is accurate for the patient, but we don't know how much is delivered to the patient. For example, if we fix 50 joules and the patient is all, only receiving 49 means that is ineffective for the fibrillation to stop. So in order to uh, check whether whether the accurate things are delivered to the patient, we can use this type of analysis. And of course, for the, as I told before, for the accreditation, hospital accreditation, calibration and preventive maintenance and everything is important and to be maintained. So next slide, sir. So how often should the calibration of uh, medical devices has to be performed. So for the uh, mainly the diagnostic equipments and therapeutic equipments, the recommended usage is one year. In each year, we have to calibrate uh, the diagnostics and the therapeutic equipments. And for the radiological equipments, we are performing the quality assurance or the QA, which is done once in two years. And for the lab equipments, laboratory equipments, we are uh, using, uh, we are doing it in six months time. And uh, next is the testing. Next slide, sir. So what are the tests that is performed in a medical devices? So medical devices, its performance has to be analyzed. The safety has to be analyzed. So the performance test as well as a safety test is done in a medical device. So performance test is nothing but the verifying the output of the de device. So various standards are given by the NADO to measure its performance, but different tests has to be performed in various equipments. 
and uh, it is checking the operation operation of the medical devices for example if we are taking a defibrillator whether the fixed energy is delivered to the patient is measured as a performance test and it's uh, electrical safety electrical safety according to iec standards 60601 and 62353 is checked in a safety test by using an electric electrosurgical sorry an electrical safety analyzer so all this performance test and uh, safety test are done during the calibration so next slide sir so these are the testing equipments that are available there are many but uh, i have only listed a few it is mainly used as a vital sign simulator vital sign simulators are checked to simulate simulator and analyze there is a difference simulator is used for the diagnostic equipments mainly but for the for the therapeutic equipment to analyze the output and the simulator we are giving to simulator is also acting as a patient simulator will give some values like a uh, heart rate respiration rate and ibp ibp temperature values will be given by the simulator to the medical device or the diagnostic equipment so this simulator vital sign simulator we are using electrical safety analyzers we are using defibrillator or the pacer analyzer we are using electrosurgical analyzer the gas flow analyzer for the ventilator infusion syringe pump analyzer the fetal simulator dialysis reference meter for dialysis equipment phototherapy analyzer for the for phototherapy unit the lux meter again for to calculate the intensity tachometer temperature analyzer particle count for ot i told you not laminar air flow measurement can be done for the hepa filter so incubator analyzer a qa tool for radiological equipments like uh, x ray ct mri so next slide sir so next first let's see about uh, the simulator this is uh, from tigel medical this is this is a measuring device which will simulate a condition so patient conditions like normal condition abnormal conditions can be set using this kind of simulators so this equipment will simulate the values and the patient accessories are connected to this uh, simulator and the values will be displayed in the diagnostic equipment we are taking a multi para monitor we are having uh, we we can see um, the spo2 analyzer we can check the spo2 ecg heart rate respiration rate temperature pressure so this kinds of um, this are connected to the patient and patient is giving the input so here we are, we don't have any patient a real time patient is not there so this kind of simulator is acting as a patient with various condition so the accessories are connected to the simulator and the simulation uh, simula when we start the simulation the values will be shown in the diagnostic equipment so this type of simulators can be used for the ecg machine to, to check the arrhythmias so irregular arrhythmias are nothing but the irregular multi para monitors pulse oximeters and bp apparatus so this kind of equipment that can, that can be checked with the simulators this are the mainly used for the diagnostic purpose diagnostic equipment eut is nothing but a L, uh, equipment under test which equipment we are testing that is considered as an eut the next is a defibrillator analyzer so we have seen the simulator and next is the analyzer analyzer is checking the performance uh, 
This is a unipulse model from Rigel. It measures the energy test, charge times test, synchronization test, AED and pacemaker ECG simulations can be done with the help of this. Next slide, sir. Sorry, next slide. So this is a kind of defibrillator analyzer. This is an analyzer which can uh, test the energy test, charge time test, synchronization test, AED, pacemaker, ECG simulations can be done with the help of the defibrillator analyzer. So we know that the defibrillator delivers energy. So we have to measure the charge time, how much time, they give me the statement for the charge. Synchronization test. Have to synchronize when the ECG and the regulator is taken in the And the AEDs can be checked, pacemakers can be checked using the and ECG simulation also can be done using the defibrillator device. So infusion pump analyzer is mainly used for uh, infusion and syringe pump. It, can, it measures the flow, volume, time, and occlusion pressure. Next is electrosurgical analyzer. Electrosurgical analyzer has um, the power, voltage, current, REM test, and HFPKH test. REM test is a return electrode measure, and HF is high frequency leakage which are coming uh, from the electrosurgical unit can be measured using the electrosurgical analyzer. Is it clear? Yeah, okay. So clear? Yeah, yeah, clear only. Go on. Okay. Next. Next, ne no next slide. Yeah, next slide, sir. Okay. Next slide. Infusion pump. Yeah, infusion pump analyzer is over. Electrosurgical analyzer is used for electrosurgery unit. Next slide, sir. Then we are also having the gas flow analyzer to perform uh, next. Okay. It is mainly gas flow. No, previous slide, sir. So, gas flow analyzers are mainly used for the ventilator, anesthesia machine, BiPAP, CPAP, and nebulizers. Uh, so, we can have mentioned the parameters which can be analyzed with the help of our gas flow. Next is the safety test. Next slide, sir. So this is the electrical safety test from Rigel Medical, which can perform for all 230 operated medical devices that are categorized, which are categorized into class one and class two with the type B, BF, and CF apply parts. So we can measure the earth resistance, current leakage, current, enclosure current, patient leakage, the voltage and the insulation resistance can be measured with the help of a safety analyzer. So next slide, sir. So next is a final topic like a medical device regulation. So each country has their own medical uh, regulation bodies. I have listed some of the regulations uh, that are available, like European Union, EU, uh, like in Europe, countries and all EU medical device regulations, Australia, Therapeutic Good Administration, USA Food and Drug Administration, which is also called FDA, and in China, State Food and Drug Administration, I also given the logos, and Saudi Arabia, Russia, and likewise, each countries are having their own regulatory bodies, and in India, next slide, sir. 
So in India recently, we have uh, introduced the regulatory bodies uh, under the Central Drug Standard Control Organization, CDSU. Uh, CDSU categorizes medical devices into two different categories, which are give, uh, like um, the medical devices with a higher priority, like implants and um, lower priority will be uh, will be handled by the state licensing authority and the equipments with the higher priority will be handled by the central licensing authority. So this uh, Indian government have uh, classified the medical equipments to class A, class B, class B and class B. So class C and the So class C and class D are considered as uh, major equipments. So it will be licensed by central. And class A and uh, class B medical device are uh, Hello. Is it clear, sir? Next slide, can you go back to next, next slide, sir? So according to medical device regulations in India, the equipments are classified into low risk, low moderate risk, moderate uh, high risk, and the very high risk like uh, heart valves, implant, implantable defibrillators, moderate high risk into ventilators. Some of the equipments um, like uh, are considered into class C and the class B equipments. And this is all about medical regulation. It cannot be detailed because of uh, less time. Next, let's see the career opportunities of a biomedical engineer. A biomedical engineer can be a clinical engineer in a hospital. So when a biomedical engineer is working in a hospital, some hospitals they consider as a clinical engineering department and they will be having a separate biomedical engineering department. And the biomedical engineers can perform as a project manager, as I said before, uh, we can um, go into construction field along with incorporating with uh, civil engineers in the construction of a uh, hospital, the purchase manager. So they, the purchase department will be handling all the purchase uh, activities of medical devices. So we can be the head of the department or we can manage uh, the purchase activities of medical devices. So the medical, uh, so the biomedical engineer can be a sales engineer in a company or can be acting as a dealer. So technical engineer or an application engineer can teach the healthcare professionals how to use or, or even the biomedical engineers how to uh, use or the what is the application of the uh, equipment we can taught, uh, teach to them the research and development where uh, we are manufacturing or we are uh, making a new equipment development as is done in this field research and development quality assurance after uh, producing after making an uh, equipment uh, before coming into the market we have to assure the quality so we can uh, be a quality control engineer, a calibration engineer, a service engineer, a QA engineer, regulatory affairs. We can work with regulatory affairs to formulate new laws and uh, to check whether the company is following or the manufacturing devices is following a regulatory rule. Be into regulatory affairs, software development. The customer care or the support team, there are number of vacancies other than this available for a biomedical engineer. I have listed a very few. So the major areas that a biomedical engineer uh, can get into after uh, completing a So the next is what are the advanced uh, next slides, sir. So now, now let's see what is the advanced advantages of taking a hospital training or hands-on training. 
so after the graduation or uh, after the btech we might not be knowing much practical scenarios that is happening so it is always good to get into a hospital which i told you which is uh, the hospital should be an accredited hospital like an abh or dc accredited hospital so that there are more equipments and there are more facilities than an ordinary hospital so why we have to take a hospital training it's like we have we can understand the pattern and the working of a hospital so we can uh, get an opportunity to work with the various healthcare professionals we know that in a hospital there are several departments like hr department financial department um there are many types of departments and n number of workers are working n number of professionals are working like engineers doctors and staff um the administration team everyone is working so we have to, we will get a chance to work with all this kind of professional teams and uh, different departments we can understand the different departments and i told you different departments contains different types of equipments and we can get to know all the operations of such equipments and we can even choose a field of interest we can even go to the diagnostic equipments area or therapeutic equipment area or even to the radiological equipment according to the area of interest we can choose our career from uh, our hospital based training so we can maintain there is a proper discipline and time man- management is maintained in a hospital it is not like as like working in an office so it, there is a fixed time so we have to complete the work what our scheduled works so i told you the troubleshooting has to be done um, at the correct time the calibration has to be done correct time so everything has to be performed with the time within the time we have to meet within the time so, so we can uh, learn a proper discipline and time management so improve the competency of the team work so we are working with several other engineers we'll get to know many information from them and also it is helpful when is it audible hello hello sir hello is it audible sir the hospital training is also a platform where we can meet uh, major company uh, representatives like we can meet all the manufacturing company um, representatives as sales managers we can meet we can meet the application engineers we can meet the uh, service engineers uh, when they are coming for um, repair uh, for training purpose or for sales related works we can meet them and we can get to know about their profession get to know the about the opportunities that is available in their company or we can even approach them for uh, if there is any job requirement is there we can approach them the next is uh, the what's the role of a biomedical engineer in hospital so major role is to maintain all the records of medical equipment that is available in a hospital so as i told you there is a routine check has to be done in case of preventive maintenance troubleshooting uh, calibration has to be done in uh, done for all medical equipments in various departments the biomedical engineer has to organize a demo uh, and a technical uh, before the purchase so organize a demo for the healthcare professionals uh, regarding how to use the equipments how to maintain the equipment so installation and commissioning with the documents so installation things and uh, other documentation works has to be done by the biomedical engineer the cre- creative or the preventive maintenance has to be taken care by a biomedical engineer so calibration of medical devices or the qa for the radiological equipment and the uh, hands on or clinical training has to be given to the end user or the medical professional and uh, more than that uh, we have to maintain a proper records of medical devices and if there is any breakdowns or if there is any 
uh, repair that had happened to the equipment that uh, all the full history has to be made in the clinical engineering department so i hope um, yeah that's all about uh, troubleshooting and maintenance of medical devices the final topic so uh, samson sir can we move on to the next slide thank you yeah. thank you that's all about the section i hope uh, you might have understood some details about the medical equipment and some shooting it in some hello yes sir uh, there is a question in the chat box is there any automatic calibration technique used in any of the medical instruments sir self calibration is available in uh, some major equipments okay like as i told you before like for uh, defibrillator there is an operation check which is a kind of calibration and for infusion and the syringe pump is also having a type of calibration self calibration is there some equipments are having okay. some equipments are having self calibration is available okay there is another question from uh, amrita ma'am what is the down time of medical devices what is the down time of medical device is there any specific time or uh, related to the instrument no it is it depends upon the usage of the medical devices so how well we are using and how well we are maintaining the equipment it depends upon that mainly if you are have if you are using it if the healthcare professionals are handling it very roughly the down time can be easily happen so if we are maintaining it depends upon the maintenance that's why we are doing the preventive maintenance things and other calibration methods in order to reduce the uh downtime of an equipment so there, there is no particular time uh, for a downtime like if you are using a medical equipment has to be used for about 6 uh, year time so if it is more than that we have to continuously check the performance of a medical device so that's all okay about. there is another question what is a tourniquet tourniquet T O U R N I Q U E T. Oh, uh, that is uh, used in medic. One minute. Ah, uh, okay. So it is an OT equipment which is used to control the venous and atrial circulation for a period of time. So in order to maintain a um, so if you are having any injuries or something in order to stop the blood flow we are using this kind of equipment in order to prevent the loss of blood we are using tonic wet so high pressure is maintained with the help of that pressure we are stopping the blood flow so you so i would sincerely thank everyone who has joined this today's session thank you everyone thank you one and all also there is no um, feedback form circulated uh, for the today's session as we have said it is an optional all the certificates have been uh, delivered 
and uh, if there is any certificate not uh, received till now today you may expect or late by monday therefore there won't be any delay if it is not reaching you by monday you can give a reminder on tuesday thank you thank you very much Thank you everyone. Thanks for joining us today's session. I have given my email ID in the chat box. If any questions or uh, queries, kindly be free, feel free to post any questions. This FTB WhatsApp group will be active uh, continuously. And if any uh, important sessions like workshop, webinars conducted in your region, Kindly post your uh, uh, link. We would be happy to attend your sessions. Thank you. Yeah, it is uh, the control of WhatsApp group will be released now. Uh, again, you can give your uh, comments or important feedbacks. We have called for a group photo session so that we are requesting you to post your photograph, email ID, your institution name and place. And uh, many of you have completed. If you have yet to do it, you can please do it by today up to 8 p.m. If anyone want to speak, you can unmute your audio and you can speak. Yes, sir. Anyone want to speak? Professor Kotiswara Rao? Professor Sridharan? Okay, we'll come to the end of the session. As the time is getting over, we will disconnect the meeting. Thank you. Thanks for joining us.